Good evening, everyone. It's indeed an honor and a privilege once again to be in the presence of the Lord. We are in his courts, and we are here to give him thanks and praise. This, e this week, all week, we've been having our health week with Dr. Walt Cross. Our seminars, they are great, and I trust and hope that everyone has been listening in and applying it to ourselves. At this time, before we go into our song service, we will ask Sister Carol to open up in prayer for us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege that you have given to us to be light bearers for your kingdom. As we gather this evening to share the information that you have given to us so that we can live healthier lives and share the gospel through health. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be here with us tonight. Speak through our speaker, open our hearts and our minds to receive that which you have for us. Bless us to this end, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. With that, we will start with our hymn 330, Take My Life and Let It Be. Hymn 330. <laughs>
him. 326. Open my eyes that I may see. Him 326. Welcome everyone, good evening, and welcome to our third night of our Health in Time of Crisis lecturer from our virtual lecturer, Elder Walt Cross. Welcome to everyone that is viewing us here in at home, or those who are on the various platform, or visiting from different countries, Jamaica, Canada, England, or wherever you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So far, we've been having very good topics. We had so far Sunday night and Monday night, and I have been enjoying myself. So just to review, so far, Sunday night, Brother Campbell, what was the topic? It was optimal immunity and how to achieve it. You know, Brother Campbell, I really enjoy that because I learned so much, especially about that sugar intake. I've been taking in too much sugar, and so that is the first thing that I've been working on. How about Monday night? Monday night spoke about stress, the immune depressor, and we learned about stress that it sends out cortisol and it really shuts down your system for a while, and we are all too often dealing with stressful situations. Uh-huh, how about tonight? What is the topic? And tonight is the answer for last night, if you're watching, so tonight the topic is how to effectively address stress naturally. How to effectively address stress naturally. How about Wednesday night? What is the topic for Wednesday night? Wednesday night, you'll be getting the mountain medicine and Thursday night is the part two 
off the mountain medicine. Aha, uh -huh. how about Friday night? What will Friday be our topic? Friday night, Friday night, we all can't miss. Friday night is talking about attacking cancer and diabetes. How wow. to attack cancer and diabetes. And Sabbath. Sabbath, we have a full day, three lectures. Three. Sabbath. And how about the topics for, for, for Sabbath morning? Sabbath, we expect everybody, Sister Campbell, to be with us all day. Of we're course. starting out at 10 o'clock in the morning where we're going to prepare the brain for battle. Then at 11, the divine service hour, we'll be having help messages to tell how far we have come in 157 years. And then between 4.30 and 5.30, you'll be having um, question and answer um, segments. And so for that, we'll tell you and remind you that each night, we will want you to go into the chat and leave your questions there. Put your questions in the chat. We have a team working on them. And so we'll gear up to get all your questions answered. And I do think we have uh, additional announcements. Yes, we do. Okay. For those who want a private personal consultation with the speaker. Um, again, his number is 423-623-4091. You can call him and set up your appointment. And as I said, if we have um, anything that you, from the nightly lectures you want to ask him about, please put those questions in the chat. On Sunday the 21st, we'll be having our grand um, health fair, yes. and this year, we, due to the COVID restrictions, we're gonna have a drive-through drive -through. health mm -hmm. fair. Your families are welcome. We wanna see you there. We'll have goodies in store. And all remember to keep things. the kids in the car. Keep the kids in the car. Because we have goodie bags for them, right? And we'll give goodie bags to the kids that we do see. Don't yes. tell us that you have 10, 12 kids at home. The kids have to be in the car. Yes. So we can give them the goodie bags. So you know I'll have my three with me, right? Right. Yes, we will have our three. And for the adults, we'll have a lot of vegetation there on, on site. We'll have um, coconut water, all kind of refreshments for you. So please come and join us. And do remember, we also have the blood mobile. There's a blood yes. drive going on. It's uh, badly needed. And to schedule your appointments, you'll go to sunrisehealthier at gmail.com. That is sunrisehealthfear at, at gmail.com and schedule your appointment with the Blood Mobile. It will also be here. Amen. And tonight's scripture reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. And it says, Therefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Shall we pray? Let us bow our heads wherever you are. And close our eyes as we reflect our thoughts heavenward. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your bountiful gifts bestowed upon your people. We know that we need to be broken and to made whole. And therefore, we come to the potter's house as the material of clay in his hand to ask him to fashion us and make us into his will. Let us do what the Father require of us. And for those who are waiting, who are watching from various platforms in various locations around the world, without good health, it is impossible for us to do the work of the master. It is impossible to us to enjoy quality of life and spend time with our children. So Father God, we pray that those who are listening will hear droplets that is able to be applicable to their lives and make lifestyle changes, not only for physical benefits, but to spiritually be drawn closer to Jesus Christ. We pray this night for our man of God who is bringing forth these health lectures, the Elder Cross, that you will hide him under the cross, empower him, and let the words that we hear tonight will not be his word, but that come directly from thy throne, that your people can benefit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. But and before Brad Cross speaks to us, we will have our theme song again. <laughs> Truth thou hast 
you get out your paper get out your pens we're going to go in high gear we're going to cover a lot tonight there's a lot to cover and uh hang on let's see if we can go here let's uh i'm not the techiest person so let's see if we can figure this out for y'all all right are we are we good there all right well tonight we're going to look at how to address stress and anxiety naturally and anxiety kind of goes along with stress <clears throat> but let's take a look number one we're going to look at the effects of stress on the body last night we looked at some things we want to quickly look at a few more physiological issues and then we're going to jump into the fun part how to naturally treat stress and anxiety so number one let's look at the effects <clears throat> the relationship which exists between the mind and the body is very intimate when one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health of the physical system. If the mind is free and happy from a consciousness of right doing, and that's, a, that's an issue right there, many times we, we just want to look at treating signs and symptoms. But we've got to look at root cause tonight. If we remove root cause, we can address the problem. The cure is in the cause. So what's a cause here tonight? If there's an issue, if the, if the mind is free and happy, if it's not, there's a problem. But look at this, a consciousness of right doing. If you don't have a consciousness of right doing, there's an issue there. A sense of satisfaction causing happiness to others. It creates a cheerfulness that will react upon the whole system, causing a freer circulation of the blood and a toning up of the entire body. A great deal of the sickness which afflicts human Humanity has its origin in the mind and can only be cured by restoring the mind to health. Last night, remember, as we look at a quiz from last night, what percentage remember? That's right, 90%, 90% we learned last night from psychology today. There are many more than we imagine for sick mentally. Heart sickness makes many dyspeptics. That's problems with the stomach. For mental trouble has a paralyzing influence upon the digestive organs. Very, very true. The mind controls the whole man. All our actions, good or bad, have their source in the mind. It is the mind that worships God and allies us to heavenly beings. Yet many spend all their lives without becoming intelligent in regarding the casket, jewel casket, that contains this treasure. And here we go, exactly what science showed us last night. Nine-tenths of disease from which men suffer have their foundation in where? In the mind. That doesn't mean we're crazy. That means something's going on with the mind. Stress, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, all are mind issues. You may just be stressed. You may just have anxiety. That's a brain thing.
So what is stress? Stress is the body's response to a real or perceived threat or stressor. Number two, stress is our body's internal alarm system. And number three, stress prepares the body to take action. Remember we studied fight or flight back in psychology. There's three types of stress, acute, episodic acute, and chronic stress. Acute stress is the immediate onset, which forces the body into an immediate action, a minor traffic accident, an argument, impending deadline. Episodic acute stress. Acute stress, which occurs frequently, escalating demands for personal time and attention, ceaseless worry and anxiety, type A behavior characterized by a competitive drive, aggressiveness, impatience, urgency. Do you know anybody like that? Maybe it's you. Long-term stress, unrelenting job, family pressures, sleep deprivation, strained roles and responsibilities at work and home. That is long-term stress. It has been estimated that 75 to 90% of all visits to the primary physician are for stress-related problems. <coughs> Excuse me, 75 to 90% of all visits to primary care physicians are for stress-related problems. Job stress is, is far away the leading source of stress for adults, but stress levels have also escalated in children, teenagers, college students, and the elderly for other reasons, including increased crime, violence, other threats to personal safety, pernicious peer pressures that lead to substance abuse and other unhealthy lifestyle habits, social isolation and loneliness. That's a huge one out there today. Religious values and ties, the loss of other strong sources of social support that are powerful stress busters. And if we look at youth today or even adults, what is a huge issue out there that is causing major stress in our youth and adults today? That's true. It's media stress, social, uh, social media stress. Well, Susie got a new dress. Sally, look what her husband got her. Or look at the vacation that Tom got. It's huge out there today. We are all subject to stressors. The amount of stress we experience depends on how we respond to them. There's different, we have a stressor, and then we have the response. There may be financial stress, work, relationships, health, traffic, pollution, and then your response may be verbal, physical, or mental. But when we have that stressor come to our eyes, come to our ears, it goes through our brain, hopefully, and our response is based on how the brain responds to that stressor. And then the brain determines, hopefully, our response. Sometimes I wonder if it ever goes through the brain. All of a sudden, just boom, there's a response. Hopefully, when that stressor happens, your brain processes that stressor, and then you respond appropriately based on your brain's response. That's very, very important. That's why our brain has to be very healthy so that we respond appropriately, as God would have us to, uh, to respond, or as the next day, we're not embarrassed. Dr. Walter Cannon's classic research, cat confronted by a dog. Dr. Cannon took a cat that hated dogs and he took a dog that hated cats. He took the cat and he measured, measured its vitals. He then let the cat go, let the dog go, and the dog and cat took off running. This is what he found. The heart rate went up on the cat. Respirations went up. Blood sugar went up. Blood clotting mechanism went up. That's in case the dog bit the cat. Muscle function went up, but digestive process shut down. They then went to look to see if the same thing happens to a human. What happens when you and I are chased by the dog or by the bear or by whatever? Increased heart rate, blood pressure, respirations, hormones and adrenaline, sugar in the blood, blood clotting mechanisms, muscle functions, queasy stomach, nervous perspiration, headaches, sporadic eating, increased hunger, loss of appetite, changes in sleep habit, 
reduction in the digestive process. Notice what happened there. Psychological changes, digestion went down. And also a reduction in the immune system. We also now found from Harvard, there is a, 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 a shutdown in the body's healing function when we have psychological stress. Under stress, the body releases cortisol and adrenaline, which raises the blood pressure and prepares the body for doing battle. So can you see why people have high blood pressure? Very easily, stress raises cortisol, it raises uh, adrenaline, it also dumps potassium. Those three things causes the blood pressure to go up. When physical action is taken though, the body uses up the stress hormones in the blood, reducing the stress and relaxing the body. So when, at, when we exercise, what happens is the cortisol comes down, the adrenaline comes down, the potassium improves, and boom, we, the, we're doing much better. When physical action is not taking, such as when we're sitting at our desk all day long, stressed out, stuck in traffic, and I tell you, I don't have much patience in traffic. I used to live in Orlando, and I remember those days sitting in traffic. There's things to do. I don't like just sitting around. I don't even like to shave. It just takes time. Stuck in traffic, hurrying to finish our taxes before midnight. The stress hormones and chemicals in our blood remain for long periods of time. So let's say that the, uh, so we're, we're sitting at our desk all day long. We're dealing with stress all day long. We're stuck in traffic, whatever that may be. What do you think happens to our blood pressure when it's that way all day long? It's up all day long. Stress affects, stress affects the onset, treatment, or recovery from the following diseases and conditions. Take a look at this, y'all. Stress affects the onset, treatment, or recovery from the following diseases and conditions. Cardiovascular disease, these are major illnesses. Cardiovascular disease, cancer, angina pectoris. Angina is, is where we get uh, pain when we're having a, a slowing down of blood going into the heart. God, there's three kinds of muscles and the heart is the muscle solely of its own. And God made it to where it's is shut down. Or, or slowed too much, that causes what's called angina. Diabetes mellitus, tuberculosis, rheumato uh, rheumatoid arthritis, hypertension, ulcers, AIDS. Wait a minute, Walt. I thought AIDS was a bloodborne pathogen. Well, it is, but what happens is stress can take you faster from, HI from HIV into full-blown AIDS. So if you wanna get to AIDS faster, if you already have HIV, just get you some stress. Muscle-related conditions, allergies, common colds, warts, skin rashes, loss of hair, and graying of hair. Stress can bring these items on. I remember my dad told me a story when I was a little boy. That when he was a little boy in Chattanooga, Tennessee, there was an old man that had a little uh, store. And one day, two little boys came in with, with toy guns and they pretended to rob him with these toy guns. The man did not know it was a toy gun, thought they were real guns, and dad said his hair turned gray in a very short period of time. It scared him so bad. So where is the real danger? Acute stress, that's something that happens really quick, and it's over, or chronic stress, which lasts a long time. Where's the real danger? Chronic. Unrelieved stress causes the most damage to the body. Remember, let's go back to psychology. We learned that U stress, E U S T R E S S, and that's where it's short stress. And some little stresses can help us, can help motivate us to get going. And that's U stress. But it's the chronic stress that really has the problem. Unrelieved stress causes the damage. Mental effects of an ongoing stress or mental fatigue, loss of spontaneity and cre uh, creativity, confusion, forgetfulness, difficulty in making decisions. Do you ever have difficulty making decisions? Could be because you're stressed. Anxiety, depression, lower self-worth, lower intellectual function, boredom, 
Emotional hypersensitivity. Have you ever seen people like that? They're the kind of people when, when people get in a, when the ball team gets in a huddle, they say, oh, they're talking about me. Feelings of isolation and alienation. Tendency towards suppressing feelings. Withdrawal, aggression, maybe quick temper. Also loss of control. Increased risk-taking behavior, increased drug use and abuse. People trying to escape. Stressors or mental effects. Did you know, and we talked about this just, uh, just uh, the other day, did you know that just one minute of anger can suppress your immune system for up to six hours? Do you ever get angry? And as I mentioned, when Dr. Kana and I spoke together a few uh, uh, a few weeks ago, he's a, uh, a neurologist, and we were speaking on the subject of stress. I asked him on the platform as we were speaking, can stress do the same physiological, uh, can it have the same physiological effect in the brain as anger in this situation? He said, absolutely. So let's change the word. Did you know that just one minute of stress, major stress, can suppress your immune system for up to six hours? So that was part one, just to kind of go through quickly, what is the effect of stress on the body? And most of us know that because we experience it a lot. But let's take a look at what are some natural treatments for stress and anxiety. Get out the pens and paper. We're going to write some prescriptions this evening. <clears throat> the first prescription, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. And I know a lot of y'all know that song, and I encourage y'all to sing it at your meetings. Proverbs 17, 22. It's interesting. I was in New York City, just north of New York, back in 2008, when we were speaking at his conference, and, uh, and I would sing this song in between the meetings, and a physician stand up, stood up, who was outside of New York City, and she said, I need to share something with y'all. Yes, ma'am. She says, I'm a specialist in bone marrow. That's all I deal with bone marrow in New York City. She says, I have found that your song is very true. She says, what happens is if a person is happy, the bone marrow produces a chemical that builds the immune system. She said, but it's always upset, always something wrong. How are you doing, Sally? Oh, terrible. It's a terrible day, isn't it? She says, if that person is not a happy person, the bone marrow does not produce that chemical that builds the immune system. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Disease is sometimes produced and is often greatly aggravated by the imagination. Many are lifelong invalids who might well, if they only thought so, who, uh, who might be well if they only thought so. Do you ever know people like that? People that just mentally, they're always sick and, and they just need to be positive and that can make a difference? There are people like that. Now here's another prescription, y'all. Courage, hope, faith, sympathy, love promotes health and prolongs life. Courage, hope, Faith, sympathy, love promotes health and prolongs life. A contented mind, a cheerful spirit is to the body and strength, is health to the body and strength to the soul. If you're looking for some good prescriptions here tonight, I encourage you to take these notes. How expensive it is, is it to have courage? How expensive is it to have hope, faith, sympathy? or even love, or a contented mind, a cheerful spirit. This is not expensive drugs, y'all. This is not something you have to go pay $500 to go see the doctor. It's not a drug that's, that you're, out of the, you're in the donut. Christ has given us to us for free. It's how you deal with it up here in your mind. Gratitude, rejoicing, benevolence, trusting God's love and care. These are health's greatest safeguards. 
Do you have gratitude? Are you rejoicing? Benevolence, remember that? That's giving to others, helping other people, trusting God's love and care. These are health's greatest safeguards. Again, not very expensive. The relation, the relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than many realize. Many of the diseases from which men suffer are the results of mental depression. Here we go. This is just on the opposite side. We were looking at positive things. Now let's look at what problems cause the problems. Mental depression, grief, anxiety, discontent. You're not happy with your car. You'd like a better car. You're not happy with your wife. You want a better wife. You want a different husband. Your husband's not whatever. You want a better husband. You want a bigger house, whatever it may be. You're discontented. You're not happy. Remorse. Boy, I wish I hadn't married him. Boy, I wish I hadn't taken that job. Guilt. Distrust. All tend to break down the life's forces and to invite decay and death. Isn't that amazing? Grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, guilt, distrust, <clears throat> all tend to break down the life forces and to invite decay and death. See, all of those are brain things. All of those issues are the condition of the mind, how you process things. Is it positive or is it negative? If it's negative, it can cause significant problems in your body, causing stress and other issues. How can I manage my stress? There's controllables versus non-controllables. What are controllables? And I tell y'all, many people take... Oh, the word I'm looking for here... <clears throat> They've learned these all their life, and they just um, they just don't see the value. I can't bring the word I'm looking for here. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, that's making the right decisions, air, rest, and trust in God. These are the foundations for your health. This is the golden key. We got to follow these eight laws. And if we follow those eight laws, we find that we have health. As I sit down and work with people who are sick and I go through their health issues and then I go through what do you eat for breakfast? What time do you eat breakfast? Um, what do you eat for the noon meal? What time do you eat the noon meal? What do you eat for supper? What time do you eat the supper? Do you eat between meals? As I go deep into these questions, each one of these, what is your exercise program? How much water do you drink a day? How much do you drink at a single time? Do you get sunshine? Do you drink alcohol? Do you, whatever they may be, and I go through them individually. When I finish, many times I know why they have those health problems. I was in, um, this weekend I was in uh, Arizona, and I was speaking on this topic here, and there was a physician in the office, in the audience, and I asked her, is this true for when you sit down and talk to your patients? She's a medical doctor, but she does natural medicine. She said, absolutely. I can go through these eight questions with my patients, and by the end, I can answer why many times they have the health problems that they do. It's very easy. God loves us. He does. He cares for us. And he gives us the answer here. It's interesting. <clears throat> the, the text that was read this evening, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, God could have said, just whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And that would have covered everything. But he loves you and I. And he knows that what you eat and what you drink, which fall under nutrition, significantly affects your body's health, but mostly affects how well your brain works. You see, your brain is the most important organ in the body. Why? Because that's how you communicate with God. And he wants it clear. He wants you to be able to discern his word. So he loves us. Like there's a commandment that says, remember. He didn't have to say, remember. He could have just said, do this. But he said, remember this, guys. 
Why? Because it was going to be forgotten someday. Well, God gave us a little tip there in, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, whether therefore you eat or drink. Guys, that's very important. What you eat or drink now, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of him, of God. So these eight laws are significantly controllable. You determine whether you do this or not. Nutrition. <clears throat> the increased amount of adrenaline that is suddenly released into the body during stress causes the body to mobilize and quickly utilize important vitamins and nutrition, nutrients such as amino acids, B vitamins, vitamin C, and minerals like magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus. It is therefore critical to ensure adequate and cons uh, consistent replenishment of these important nutrients during times of physical, emotional, and physiological stress. See, our food has these nutrients in it, but if we have significant stress, which dumps those, we better replenish them either by a more food that has it or supplementation, because you will not be ready for the next stressor that's coming down the pike. Today, most individuals lead chronically stressed lives without a sufficient intake of essential minerals and vitamins through a healthy diet and supplementation to compensate for their body's increased need. Many are very, un many are very vulnerable to the damaging physiological effects of stress. See, without sufficient intake of essential minerals and vitamins through a healthy diet, that's the most important way, and supplementation. Now, that's supplementation if you're not getting it through good healthy food in the backyard that's using heirloom seeds, seeds and that has good nutrition in the ground. So let's look at some vitamins. Let's look at vitamin A. I noticed I turned my, my phone off, but that turned my watch off. Vitamin A, B complex, vitamin C, Vitamin A plays an important role in maintaining immune function. See, we dump vitamin A when we're stressed. As an, as an antioxidant, it protects immune function by helping to maintain the integrity of the epithelial barriers to infection. It also uh, acts at T cells. Studies show that vitamin A confers a uh, protective effect against uh, pre-oxidation in the heart and brain. Pre-oxidation is believed to be a risk factor for heart attack and stroke. So we need that vitamin A. See, we're dumping it with stress. We better eat something that has vitamin A or take vitamin A if we have a lot of stress. Foods high in vitamin A, sweet potatoes, carrots, squash, cantaloupe dark leafy green uh, greens, tropical fruit. I'd say y'all enjoy that. I, I, I listen to your accents. I hear folks from the islands. I'm sure y'all enjoy mangoes and avocados, sweet red peppers, dried apricots. It's interesting, the sweet potato, though you can eat it raw, you can juice it, you have more A if it's cooked. Carrots, more A if it's cooked. But yet some other parts of the sweet potato, you get more if it's not cooked. Some parts of the carrots, you get more if it's not cooked. So that's why you need a combination of cooked and uncooked. Butternut squash, cooked. Notice cantaloupe, cantaloupe not cooked. Dark leafy greens, cooked. If you want the vitamin A component. And romaine lettuce. B, B vitamins or B complex vitamins. These are critical y'all for stress. Uh, again, remember I was mentioning when I was at Florida Hospital in 1978, an old doc there, we were uh, uh, there back then, and uh, he said, Walt, if you want to help your patients with stress, the best thing I've ever found is B-complex. B vitamins are necessary for numerous body processes, including but not limited to energy production and metabolism. Studies show a positive association with intake of certain B vitamins and health. Studies show improved thiamine or vitamin B1 status corresponded with improved mood. Niacin, also a member of the B vitamin family, is found to be beneficial for stress-related conditions. Niacin 
has uh, antioxidant activities and studies corroborate its uh, beneficial tried levels and protecting against that's way though to lower cholesterol don't eat cholesterol if you want to address your triglycerides manage your stress don't eat sugar don't eat oil a lot of oil and don't eat meat <clears throat> Foods high in B1, thiamine, acorn squash, navy beans, green peas, nuts, dry roasted soybeans, asparagus, sunflower seeds. Foods high in B2, riboflavin, almonds. Now, uh, raw brown uh, Italian mushrooms, sesame seeds, spinach. Foods high in B3, niacin, avocados, green peas and fresh uh, fresh green peas, peanuts, sunflower seeds, and portobello mushrooms. Do you know what is the number one food for brain? The number one food for the brain. I'll give you a hint. It's on this page. The number one food that helps brain function. It's actually number one on this, this list. It's avocados. Did you know that avocados are a complete meal in of themselves. You don't have to have anything else with them. Avocados, God made the avocado to have everything to be a complete meal, just eating that avocado. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is another powerful antioxidant that scavenges free radicals and protects against some of the harmful effects of stress. Remember in last night's meeting, we learned that vitamin C is needed on a daily basis. The body doesn't make it. We need to have food that has vitamin C on a daily basis. Studies indicate that cellular uh, levels of vitamin C drop when subjected to stress. Supplementation of vitamin C was found to be beneficial in this case. In a study of 120 males and female subjects, research subjects, uh, researchers reported that vitamin C, 3,000 milligrams a day, and that's not a lot, decreased the rise in blood pressure, cortisol, anxiety, and typically accompanied acute physiological stress. So just 3,000 milligrams a day, they found was very effective in raising the blood pressure, cortisol, and anxiety that typically accompany acute physiological stress. Remember, vitamin C has a half-life of 30 minutes. Vitamin E. In the same research study where vitamin C was, re, uh, was reduced by stress, it was found that vitamin E was also reduced at a cellular level. Now, let me share with y'all, if you have foods that are high in vitamin E, such as uh, almonds, you don't want to freeze them. Any food that's high in vitamin E, if you freeze it, you lose the vitamin E. Uh, walnuts have E, but especially almonds are a great source of E. You do not want to freeze them because you lose that vitamin E. Uh, bread is a good source of vitamin E. Minerals, magnesium, calcium, zinc, potassium. Now lithium, actually it's an element, not a mineral but uh, these are lost with stress. Magnesium is an essential mineral, especially during stress. Magnesium is often referred to as the anti-stress mineral, and we've also learned here that magnesium is considered the best medication for depression. During the stress response, cortisol and adrenaline release. So when cortisol goes up, adrenaline goes up, the body has a fire extinguishing system in it that dumps a chemical to protect the cells from the harmful effects of the adrenaline. The chemical that God put in the body to come from this fire extinguishing system that happens when we're stressed to protect the cells from the harmful effects of adrenaline that buffers those cells is magnesium. So it's not surprising that magnesium is 
a major deficiency in Americans. It's estimated that 85% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. Well, stress is the number one diagnosis. We dump magnesium because of elevated adrenaline due to stress, so we have a lot of magnesium deficiency. And again, be careful with, uh, when you look at your magnesium numbers under the lab, uh, with the lab report, research now finds that a mag ser serum or magnesium that comes from the se blood serum, only one and a half to 2% of the magnesium in the body is in the serum. So actually a blood serum level is not as accurate as a blood RBC, as an RBC magnesium level, according to the lab guys at the hospital, because it's just more accurate. There's more magnesium there. So if you really want to find out what your magnesium level is, check your RBC level. Chronic stress can induce a vicious cycle of magnesium deficiency. Oh, absolutely, because you're stressed all the time, you're dumping the magnesium all the time because of the elevated cortisol. I'm sorry, the elevated adrenaline. Magnesium deficiencies are also seen in patients with stress-related conditions of diabetes and hypertension. Uh, and this, uh, the study found middle-aged patients with hypertension who had low blood levels of magnesium had a blood pressure lowering response to three months of magnesium supplementation. Magnesium works very well there. Calcium. As an electrolyte, calcium performs a number of crucial biological functions, including muscle contraction, nerve condition, granular secretion, energy production, and maintenance of immune function. Actually, calcium is the most important mineral in the whole body. The most important. <clears throat> calcium has been shown to have an effect on the reduction of systolic blood pressure, uh, with persons diagnosed with hypertension. In addition, supplementary intakes of calcium have been associated with sufficiently reduced patient risks of a stroke. Be careful here, y'all. Listen up. Be careful. If you take calcium, which I, my recommendation is your calcium uh, consumption be from green leafy vegetables and your, from your food. Uh, you'll find that you if you take your calcium from the food, you definitely do a lot better. But if you do have to take calcium supplementation, be cautious. Many people come in here with uh, their physicians asking them to take calcium for let's say osteoporosis. The problem is if you take say a thousand milligrams of calcium, it takes 500 milligrams of magnesium to be able to break that calcium down. So if you're not taking a two to one ratio CalMag in your supplementation, then you take that thousand milligrams of calcium, you just dumped another 500 milligrams in your already low banks of magnesium in the body. So if you do take a calcium supplementation, take at least a two to one ratio. Some are out there as a one to two or one to one, but at least take a two to one calcium to magnesium. Some people say you have to have calcium to make magnesium work. That's wrong, they just have, they have it backwards. It takes magnesium to make calcium work, not calcium to make the magnesium work. Zinc, and we've heard a lot about zinc lately. Zinc levels decline rapidly following injury or physical stress, and zinc is also rapidly lost in the urine following acute and chronic stress. Males lose zinc also a lot more than women, so men are, need to make sure that they have plenty of zinc. That's just how God made us. Uh, you can get zinc in, um, in um, pumpkin seeds, but you need to take about a cup a day to get enough zinc if you did it. And so uh, sometimes you'll find other sources of zinc or maybe you need to take some zinc. But be careful of zinc. One thing I'm noticing is with the coronavirus, a lot of folks are taking 50, 100. There's a doctor over in another county next to me. She's having her patients and uh, her employees take over 200 milligrams of zinc a day. The problem is if you don't take copper, you're gonna have a, uh, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a problem because zinc causes you to lose copper. So if you take say 50 milligrams of zinc, it might be a good idea to take three to five milligrams of copper because you're dumping that, you're losing that copper. It takes copper uh, for the, the, the zinc. If a patient has high, a high copper level, the physician's gonna give the patient zinc to bring that copper level down because zinc take, depletes the copper.
potassium. When the body is stressed, potassium is quickly excreted from the body. Several years ago, a good friend of mine, he's a physician, and he called me and said, Walsh, he says, I understand, he said that potassium causes the blood pressure, a loss of potassium or low potassium causes the blood pressure to go up. I said, yes, it sure does. He says, Walt, give me a good source of potassium. He said, I got a buddy of mine, another physician, who has high blood pressure, and I think it's, and he also has low potassium. He says, I need to increase his potassium. Well, we'll we need to look at this a moment. Tell me if he, uh, tell me if he approached it the right direction. So he says, okay, his buddy, another physician, has low potassium, and his hypothesis, that's what's causing his blood pressure to go up. So he said, what are foods that are good in potassium? I said, blackstrap molasses, or we say blackstrap molasses. A tablespoon twice a day. He said, good, send it to me. So I sent it to him. It wasn't that long, he called me back and said his, buddy, his buddy's blood pressure was normal. He was off his medication. He was taking the blackstrap molasses, which was good, but is that the right answer? Can anybody think which would be a better approach? The question is, why did he have a low potassium? What we're doing was he was still treating signs and symptoms instead of getting to root cause. Now, this is a dear friend of mine, I love him to death. But many times when we work in healthcare, we have that, that mentality of treating signs and symptoms. So what should have he looked at? Why did his buddy's potassium drop? His buddy was under a lot of stress. So the root cause was not the low potassium, it was the stress, but what was causing the stress was really the root issue. And so we need to take that cause away, lower the stress, his potassium's fine, and then he wouldn't have the hypertension. Important for the transmission of nerves, impulses, and the contraction of cardiac, skeletal, and smooth muscle, there is much evidence indicating that a low intake of potassium can be an important contributor to hypertension, just as we were talking about. Accumulating evidence, evidence suggests that a diet rich in potassium may be protective uh, not only against hypertension, but also against stroke and cardiovascular disease. Now, again, don't get me wrong. I'm saying a diet good in, high in potassium is good for us. How much potassium do we need a day? Back when I was in school taking nutrition, they told us that we need 3,500 milligrams of potassium a day. Today, they tell us we need 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. So definitely, we need a diet high in potassium. So if you don't have a high potassium, yes, that can lower your potassium, but there's other things can lower it also, such as the stress. So you want to find out what that root cause is. Is it diet? Is it stress? What's going on here? Lithium. Lithium is an amazing one. I learned this one from Dr. Neil Nedley. Lithium is amazing. Now, we're not talking the lithium drug. Uh, that's a synthetic, three, 600 milligrams. We're talking about an element that is in the ground, just like copper's in the ground, uh, magnesium's in the, uh, in the ground, uh, zinc's in the ground. Lithium, a trace element, has been found to be beneficial and effective on human behavior in very small quantities. It doesn't need to be that three, 500 milligrams. Historically, people have bathed in and drank lithium-rich water for its calming and relaxing effects. I really like lithium. Uh, lithium orotate is my favorite. Aspartate's okay, but I like orotate better. Lithium helps to prevent Alzheimer's. Lithium is significantly good for, for stress, anxiety, depression. It's really good for bipolar. I've seen amazing things with bipolar. I've seen amazing things with uh, depression, schizophrenia, but we use it a lot for folks with stress. I know it helps me. I take lithium pretty well every day. I wanna keep from getting Alzheimer's, but also I'm interested in managing my stress. How about herbs? Are there herbs that help with, um, with our, our stress? Siberian ginseng, valerian root, wood betony, chamomile, hops, skullcap, vetiver. Vetiver is amazing, amazing. We'll talk about it. And lavender, two favorite of mine right there, vetiver and lavender. Siberian ginseng, Siberian ginseng, 
or as we call it in the mountains, sang. Ginseng has long been used as an anti-stress herb. It has demonstrated anti-fatigue, anti-stress, uh, immunoenhancing, and antidepressive effects. Valerian root. Valerian is a well-known herb, uh, herbal comative, antispasmodic, nerve tonic, used for hypochondria, uh, nervous headaches, irritability, mild spasmodic affections, depression, and insomnia. Studies have found that valerian works best as a sleep aid over a period of a month rather than a single dose basis. I like mixing valerian skullcap and hops together. Also passion flower is good. All three of those synergistically work very well. So valerian, skullcap, hops, and uh, I actually also like uh, adding uh, passion flower. Wood betony. <clears throat> Wood betony has traditionally been used to treat anxiety and neuralgia. Wood betony acts as a tranquilizer and contains uh, glycosides that have uh, hypotensive characteristics. It lowers the blood pressure. Um, chamomile. Most of y'all know chamomile tea. It, it tastes good. It's a, I enjoy drinking chamomile tea in the evening. It just calms me down. I really enjoy it. I don't even mind. You know, it even does me good in the daytime. Um, I don't like taking things that makes me sleepy because I have work to do, but chamomile seems to do okay uh, without making me sleepy. Chamomile has a sedative effect. Hops. Hops has a sedative effect. And years ago, they used to take hops and they make a little pillow and put it under the pillowcase on top of the pillow and sleep on it. And as they would breathe the, the, the aroma of the hops flowers, it helped the people to go to sleep. Skullcap. Now, skullcap is another one of my favorites. Dr. Um, Walter Strachan, a psychiatrist at Loma Linda, taught me this one. I really enjoy skullcap. Great for depression. Uh, skullcap, uh, Dr. Um, um, Strachan told me, he said, well, you can make it as thick as mud if they'll drink it. But we'll take a quart of water, bring it to a boil, plum turn it off, add a cup of skull cap in there, <clears throat> uh, let it sit overnight, strain it, and drink that throughout the day. Works very, very well to help calm that person for stress, anxiety. Works very well for depression. Skull, skull cap has sedative and antispasmodic effects. Uh, antispasmodic uh, effects. Skull cap has also been used for nervous tension. Now. For pain, for pain, I'll give you this one here. I've used wild lettuce for many years. It works very, very well for bone cancer and major pain issues. I'll take a quart of water, bring it to a bowl, uh, turn it off, make an infusion, a cup of, of wild lettuce, let it sit overnight. But I was at the hospital at UT uh, about a year ago with a good friend of mine who had cancer and they, she was not having pain relief with the narcotics they were giving her. And they came in, they gave her something else. And it worked. So I asked the physician when he came in last time, I said, what did you give her this last time? And he said it was a nerving. And it, it's working. I said, it sure is. So I came back to the office and I started adding skull cap to my wild lettuce. And I have much better even results for pain when I mix the skull cap and the wild lettuce equal parts uh, for pain. So that's one quart of water, bring it to a bowl, turn it off, we're making an infusion. Then I add a cup of wild lettuce, a cup of skull cap, uh, let it sit overnight, drink one cup, Q2 hours, works extremely well. That's every two hours. Lavender. Lavender is used as a dietary supplement for anxiety, depression, uh, intestinal problems, and pain. Um, and we'll talk about lavender in just a moment again. Vetiver. The oil obtained from vetiver has a sedative effect and aids in the treatment of emotional outbursts, such as anger, anxiety, epileptic, and hysteric, hysteric attacks, restlessness, and nervousness. So here's what I do. I had a lady come in today. She has a lot of anxiety. I had a man come in today. Uh, actually, I had two ladies and a man come in today. But all three of them have anxiety. I'm seeing more and more anxiety today. And I asked my friend, Arvo, 
uh, Kana, the neurologist said, Arvo, are you seeing more anxiety today? He said, absolutely, we're seeing more, more anxiety. So I, what I recommend for these people, yes, water and get your rest and, you know, those basic laws of health. Yes, I encourage the B-complex and the, uh, the, the lithium ortate and the magnesium. But if they really have anxiety, I'll have them put one drop of vetiver on one wrist at where you take your pulse for the transdermal effect, just like we do with a nicotine patch or a nitro patch. Or, I mean, a, 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 yes. And then a, say vetiver here and lavender here and rub them together. And what they're doing is it, it, it's on the pulse point. I don't know if y'all can see me or not, but I put, you know, where you feel for a pulse, that's where I put a drop of lavender on one hand, put a drop of vetiver on the other hand, with the pulse area, rub them together. It transdermally goes into the blood very quickly to calm the nerves. And then I have the people take and breathe it for a few minutes, about two minutes, breathing out of the wrist of their hand. That's going where? Into the lungs. The lungs is going to where? Into the blood. And I have seen people within just two minutes, four minutes, significantly, significantly lower their, lower their anxiety. I had a lady one time, she brought in her husband and her son and I've never seen this before. I've seen women do it, but never seen men do it. It was a husband and a son, a father and a son. And they just got out of the car, came inside, and they were just, I mean, like nervous as a cat. On. Went up and just started hugging each other and just holding each other and holding each other and shaking. And, and I'm wondering, what is going on here? And the lady told me every time they ride in a car, this happens. And she says, I need help. So I asked them if they were willing to do that. And so I put it on my hand and put it, you know, and did it myself. You know, how often can you take Thorazine or Haldol or whatever the doctor say, you want to try it? No. And so I put it on here and I put it on, perfectly safe. I rub it on there, breathe it. I said, are you willing to do that? And they said, yes. So then they put it on there, rub their hands together. And his uh, the wife and I talked for a bit and they calmed right down. A little while later, about a half hour later, the lady calls me and she says, I just want to thank you. She said it worked. She said they didn't, they did fine all the way home. They're doing fine at home. Now, this has been several years ago. This last um, December, I ran into the boy down at a gas station where I live. And he says, do you remember me? I said, uh, no. He says, he says, you helped my father and I. When we came into your store, we had problems when we were riding the car. Oh, I remember that. Yes, I do. How are you doing? He says, I just want to tell you thank you. He says, we still use that. And it makes an amazing difference for us. Just one drop of lavender, one drop of vetiver makes a huge difference. I was in Crossville, Tennessee, teaching a class. And it was at break time. And a man comes up. And with his left eye was just fluttering. And uh, right eye was fine. And I said, can I help you, sir? And he says, I'm a, uh, he said, I'm a, a vet from Vietnam. I have PTSD and I'm having a PTSD attack. Can you help me? So I did it to myself again, showing him it was safe. And uh, then had, I said, would you mind to do it? He says, I'll be glad to put it on his hand. He went back and sat down and I kept working. I'm telling you within four minutes, he comes back up to me. His eye was not twittering. He had symmetry between both eyes. Both, they weren't twittering at all or fluttering at all. And um, he says, the PTSD attack is gone. Actually, vetiver is called the PTSD herb. Exercise. Exercise is a form of physical stress. Can physical stress relieve mental stress? Alexander Pope thought so. Strength of the mind is exercise, not rest. Plato agreed. Exercise would cure a, a, a guilty conscience. You'll think so. Uh, you'll think so too if you learn to apply the physical stress of exercise in a controlled graded fashion. Exercise is amazing for the body. When I when I exercise, I feel so much better. I I crave exercising. I enjoy exercising so much. I just feel so much better afterwards. This is Harvard Medical School. The mental benefits of aerobic exercise have a neural chemical basis. Exercise reduces the levels of body stress hormones, such as adrenaline and cortisol. It also stimulates the production of the endorphins, chemicals in the brain that are the body's natural painkillers and mood elevators. Endorphins are responsible for the runner high, runner's high. 
and for the feelings of relaxation and, optim uh, and optimize that uh, accompany many hard workouts. And again, Harvard, uh, Harvard Medical School, uh, School says that um, uh, neuroscientists around the world say that the best medicine in the world is what? Exercise. Exercise in almost any form can act as a stress reliever, according to Mayo Clinic. Virtually any form of exercise, from aerobics to walking, can act as a stress reliever. If you're not an athlete, or even if you're uh, out of shape, you can still make a little exercise go a long way towards stress management. Discover the connection between exercise and stress relief, and why exercise should be part of your stress management plan. It pumps up your endorphins, uh, it's medication in motion, and improves your mood. And again, according to Duke University, the best way to exercise is four times a day, four times a day. We don't drink water just once a day. You're drinking it throughout the day. You wanna exercise four times a day. If you can do 20 minutes, that would be great. Even 15, 10, five, something, just get out and exercise. If you can't leave your desk, clap your hands. Back to your hand, but your arms, rub your ears. You know, do something. People go wonder what you're doing to yourself, but I tell you, it's amazing what moving the blood does to the body. Water. If you're looking for a simple way to unwind from stress filled life or your stress filled life, try this. Drink a glass of water. And don't do it all at once because we talked about free flow. So you want to take a sip three to four times every half hour. Water is amazing. Studies have shown that being just a half a liter dehydrated can increase your cortisol level. Just a half a liter dehydrated. Now, how much water do you need? Body weight divided by two, that many ounces. We're told by University of California at Davis, it takes a half a gallon of water to run a five-year-old. A half a gallon, four water bottles to run a five-year-old. From five years old up to 128 pounds, it takes a half a gallon of water to sit on the couch. That's not activity, sit on the couch. Over 128 pounds is body weight divided by two. Unless you're a very, very large person, there's another formula, but we'll just go by normal. And that is body weight divided by two. Then take a look at the color, smell the odor, see if that's the adequate amount. For me, I am told that I'm supposed to drink a gallon of water a day. I don't weigh enough to supposedly drink a gallon of water a day, but the state of Tennessee tells all firefighters to drink a gallon of water a day because there's a possibility of going into a house fire today. And it's true. When we go into, when I, if normally I, I don't go in in the hot part because I'm the chief, I'm out there as I see instant command. But if there's not someone there yet, I'm going in fighting fire. Or if I can let someone else take command, I'm in fighting fire. I love fighting fire. But when you do go in, You've got to have adequate hydration. You can dehyd very, dehydrate very quickly. In the United States Forest Service, when I am certified with them to fight forest fires, they tell us that we're to drink a gallon of water every hour and a half that we're fighting fire. Fire it used to be every two hours. Now it's every hour and a half we're to get, drink a gallon of water. So water is very, very important. And uh, it's dependent on your size and the amount of activity that you have. Cortisol is one of the most uh, one of those stress hormones. Staying in a good hydrated status can keep your stress levels down. When you don't give your body the fluids it needs, you're putting stress on it, and it's going to respond to that. So you want to make sure you're drinking adequate water. And how expensive is water? Yes, today we do have to pay for water. We never thought we'd have to pay for water. But compare water to taking medication or happen to deal with the negative outcomes of stress. Water is amazing stress buster. Let's uh, kind of go through here, sunshine. As all of, okay, here's what happens. <clears throat> when you're standing there, ultraviolet light goes through the iris of the eye, stimulates the pineal gland, and that converts tryptophan into serotonin. <clears throat> but you can't have sunglasses on for this to happen. You've got to have, yes, it, let's, uh, I used to work down outside the Cape in the summertime and outside doing landscaping and you need sunglasses. I didn't wear sunglasses back then, but I tell you, it would have been a benefit, but you don't want to wear it all day long uh, because you need to have sunshine to come through the iris of the eye, again, for the pineal gland 
to take the tryptophan that was in your flaxseed that was ground and eaten within 15 minutes of grinding, that then is going to build the serotonin. You need that for brain function. Temperance. Temperance is basically making choices. And a lot of times we talk about uh, illicit drugs um, and we think that's what temperance is. And, and some people say it's moderation in all things. Well, no, it's not. It's moderation in the good things, total abstinence in the bad things. So alcohol, do we need moderation? No, we need abstinence, total abstinence. Tobacco, moderation? No, total abstinence. What about illicit drugs? Not moderation, total abstinence. What, what about what we listen to, the music? Do we need total abstinence? No, we were listening to some beautiful music tonight. We need moderation, choosing the right music. I tell you what, I've been to churches that I tell you the music was not fit to be in front of God. Uh, it was not good for the body. Um, it was not at all sacred. What we read and what we watch, do we want abstinence? No, we need to read the Bible. We need to read research. Uh, what we watch, it's good to watch good things, but we need to have moderation in choosing what we do and what we, what we read and what we watch. Pure air, fresh air. Researchers at Harvard School of Public Health recently studied the effects of fine particles uh, black carbon, nitrogen dioxide, and other pollutants on stress. They analyzed data in 987 men and found uh, 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 perceived levels of stress levels of stress rise when people are exposed to air pollution. Association was ex uh, especially evident in colder weather and in relation to uh, overall particle count levels. So if you live in the city and there's a lot of automobile pollution and whatever, I don't have that here. We just don't, we're in, a, we're in a small little community here with work and at home, it's nothing. I'm up in the mountains. The pollution, it, it, you know, maybe something comes across and hits the mountains and falls on me, but it's not, we didn't produce it. Um, so there is pollution, but also part of fresh air is good diaphragmic breathing. Do you breathe like a chihuahua and you just barely pant? Or do you have good diaphragmic breathing where your stomach is moving in and out like a baby when a baby breathes? If you took voice lessons, if you took wind instrument uh, lessons, your professors, uh, your, your teachers taught you to breathe with, your, with the diaphragm. Very, very important. Deep breathing is important. Um, rest. Sleep is uh, a necessary um, human function. It allows our brains to research. And recharge, I'm sorry, and our bodies to rest. When we do not sleep long or well enough, our bodies do not get the full benefits of sleep, such as muscle repair and memory cons uh, consolation. Uh, sleep is so critical that even slight sleep deprivation or poor sleep can affect memory, judgment, and mood. Researchers have shown that most Americans would be happier, healthier, and safer if they were to sleep an extra 60 to 90 minutes per night. The American Psychological association. And then the last thing, the number one thing, trust in divine power. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. The religion of Christ, so far from being the cause of insanity, is one of the most effectual remedies, for it is a potent soother to the nerves. Y'all, that's where the power is. You know, when we look at bottom line here, as we looked last night, the bottom line is trust in God. That's where the power is. Yes, nutrition, exercise, water, fresh air, all those laws of health. Those first seven, Harvard has them. Mayo's having them. Um, Cornell now is learning them. But you know what? They don't understand trust in divine power. The New Agers understand those first seven, but they don't understand trust in divine power. And that's what you and I have. We have that extra key to the keys to health. And, but this is the power that runs those keys to health. So as you look at stress, I encourage you. Yes, we've looked at the, the physiological effects of stress tonight, but let's not tr treat signs and symptoms. Let's look to how the body runs. How can we prevent stress by following those eight laws of health and proactively, proactively, 
following those laws of health. And if we do have a problem, yes, we can use the vetiver and the lavender and the B complex and the lithium. But if all possible, let's have a good nutrition, have that good exercise, have that good water, have that rest, follow those seven laws of health. But most importantly is this one right here, trust in divine power. Shall we pray? Our dear heavenly father, Lord, we thank you for giving us these eight powerful, powerful keys to health. Yes, we get complacent. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. Give us a desire to learn more. Give us a desire to implement these laws of health in our own lives so that we can help our neighbors, our children, our spouses, our friends. Because we know that it is through these laws of health they're the opening wedge. They're the right hand that allows the gospel to go through. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Elder Cross, for sharing with us tips to reduce stress naturally. We thank you because these are things that we need in this time where the virus is raging all over and we need good health. I do look forward for tonight, tomorrow night, and the topic will be mountain medicine. I am sure that the viewers out there, they too are looking forward. And we want to remind them that they need to uh, put their questions into the chat also, um, this Sabbath, the 20th, uh, we're having also a baptism. We want to keep that in mind that we're having a baptism on the 20th. And um, just, again, share this link um, to your friends and family. We want everyone to hear these good tidbits of how to be healthy, how to keep healthy, and how to be ready for anything that's coming our way. Amen. Let us bow our heads for prayer. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Theme song to close. Theme three twenty six. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me. God, thy will to see. 
Open my heart, illumine me.